All right, guys, what's going on? Stock Jock here, up $1,888 today. Finally, we are seeing some volume in the market, some follow through. It has literally been like a two month drought where it, there just hasn't been anything really moving. But uh, as you may know, the past couple of days, uh, the shippers have been just on fire. And that is none other than uh, dry is leading the way DRYS I mean look at this thing four five trading days ago the high was 515 right I mean it was 515 to 650 you know in that range seven dollars and then Trump gets elected I mean look at the low here it was 386 this is November 1st right uh, Trump gets elected and a lot of people are saying and the mark goes up you know, the market doesn't like not knowing what's going to happen. So leading up to the election, it was just kind of like up, down, up, down, up, down, kind of. They think it's going to be Hillary elected. So the market was OK. We can stay with that. When it, then it looked like Trump was going to be elected and it tanked because it wasn't ready for a Trump election. Then it just waited, waited, waited. Trump gets elected. Now the market knows which direction the country's going to go in. They don't care who's elected. They just want to know who it is. Once that happens, a lot of people thought that shippers would be the thing to go. I didn't think anything about that, but it makes sense. So on the 10th, we see the high go to from open of 480. And this is on uh, Thursday, right? Go from 480 to 1560. That's insane, right? Next day, it gapped up $2, opened at 1223 during the day, a high of 1877. Next day, opened at 4, uh, 1450, high of 4490. Whoa, that's a 40-point, no, 30-point move right there inside the day. Just way overextended, but it wasn't done. Next day, opens opens at 55 that means it gapped up 13 dollars insane opened at 55 the high of the day is 102 that was yesterday that's absolutely insane this stock a few days ago was at 479 five dollars that's insane and then to, uh today it opened at 73 and it went as high as 120 and then nasdaq just said all right, no more trading until you get us some information. That's just NASDAQ's way of saying we need to cool the jets on this thing because it's absolutely insane. This is just the kind of stuff that can happen with low float stocks. Right now, E-Trade is showing it's a million shares. Uh, yesterday in the day before, it said 18,000 shares, which I know is wrong. There's obviously more shares than 18,000. But you get the idea. It's a super low float stock, and this thing has just exploded. Now, am I going to ever trade this one? Absolutely not. This thing is up like 2,000% off of no real reason. I think uh, they have $67,000 in cash. Yeah, you bet your you bet your bottom dollar that the, an offering is going to come eventually, and it's going to hit hard. I mean, if you remember uh, SAEX back in the day, let's see, a lot of people got burned on this one. All right, look at this. Same idea, right? Low float stock. E-Trade showing 9 million shares. It was way lower than that before. Um, where is it? I think it was this right, right in here. Okay, back in August. So a couple days before the run, the high was 963, 925, and then boom, this day happened. It went from 1019 to $49. It was a crazy day. And then the very next day, it went from $45 to $75 absolutely insane and then it just started selling off and it's never really recovered since then but i mean there's people that got stuck up in here and i don't want to be that guy 75 dollars, and then two days later the high is 18 dollars. that's just you got to know is a what's moving a stock is it just people playing low float volume stocks and are trying to get in and make a quick buck or is there actually news pushing a stock well in saex's case it was just people playing a low float stock. It started running. People got kept jumping in, jumping in, jumping in, pushing it up. There's no reason for this 
you know, nine dollar stock with a market cap of I don't know, maybe nine million at the time to jump to insane levels in one day. There was no reason for it. So you always have to kind of balance it out in your head. Is the move justified on a stock? And back there, it definitely was not justified. And people paid the price. I know there's a couple of people in the chat room that I'm in. Just They got in at like 70, like 10,000 shares. And they were like saying, should I hold or sell? And it was down to $30. It's just like, holy crap, that is a loss. You just got to, uh, that's what dries, like right now. DRYS. I mean, this thing's halted. And it's probably going to come down afterwards. But I, you know, there's people trapped right now at 120, 115 that are probably crapping themselves right now. This thing could go to 880. I don't even care. Because at some point, this sucker is going to tank. This company is not worth $126 million. It's not worth that. It is absolutely not worth it. And all that's been pushing this is shippers running because of the elections over and a lot of people think that you know a trump presidency is going to be better for shippers but a two thousand percent move mm, no not justified again this thing could take off the 240 560 but i'm not gonna play it it is way too risky this is kind of like a home run play that you either hit a home run or you go bankrupt kind of thing and i'm just not into that but I digress. Let's look at today's trades. All right, my first trade today was ESEA. Shippers out of the gates, going nuts for the second day in a row. So as you can see on my watch list here, they're all shippers, except these two. Well, OPTT isn't really a shipper, but it's it plays like a shipper. And then SAEX, I kind of always have the, it's just it's a stock I occasionally play, but these are all shippers. Tops, ESAA, I had ship up there, but I took it off, SHIP because it's a five, five cent tick play, and I just don't want to play those. I hate those right now. I hope they do it with that stupid rule whenever the trial time is over with. But ESAA, first one I played at 9.32. All right, so we had this pop right out of the gate at the market open, then we came down, and I was looking for the candle over candle in the one minute. All right, so we're inside this five minute candle here. Shippers are just ripping. I'm watching all my shippers, and they're just they're ripping it, but this one's kind of lagging behind a little bit. I think this one in tops was lagging a little bit behind. So I was playing the idea that, okay, this one had a good day yesterday when shippers moved. I'm assuming today is going to be a good day as well. So it, when this one kind of sold off, I was like, okay, I'm going to play the one minute candle over candle. And that's what I did. Um, I believe it dipped down and started coming back up here. I got in at... 578 and as soon as I got in I mean it looked like everybody was playing this five minute or this one minute candle over candle as soon as I got in as it was trending up looking like it was gonna go you know candle over candle uh, it jumped out of nowhere to 650 and I just hit the sell button I mean you can see here on the order entry I held for seven seconds and I got to 630 I was like well thank you very much 2,000 shares that's a that's that's a nice way to start the day. Basically, um, what is that? 52 cents on 2,000 shares. I'll do that all day. That's a thousand bucks all day, every day. And I'm glad I sold. I mean, it did go up to 673, but then it sold really hard, sold again. And, you know, I'm just taking my money. This is my first trade of the day. Happy to have it. All right, so OPTT was my next trade. Um, this one kind of dropped pretty hard out of the open, so I only took a thousand shares on this trade. I wanted to protect my wins as well, so I took a thousand shares. I was looking for the candle over candle in the five minute, and um, we looked like we were going to do that. So I got in at 4:34 as it was coming back up, broke the five minute candle over candle, goes high a day, and I sell at 4:41. Um, I didn't get you know up into the 50s like I was hoping for but again I'm just kind of protecting my wins right now don't know how shippers are going to respond dries was halted so that was kind of my wet bellwether of what the shippers were doing it was halted 
you know. So Dry's not moving. I don't know what shippers are going to do yet. Uh, are they going to go up? Are they going to go down? Are they going to panic sell? So just playing it super safe. Made about 70 bucks on this trade. PTCT was one I was watching yesterday. Uh, it had this very nice gap up from 623 to 1163 on news a couple days, a few days ago. And then it went up again the very next day. And then it it's in consolidation. And it, yesterday it didn't drop hard at all. I mean, it gapped up and it's holding this level. This is a really nice move to hold. So I was watching it today knowing that it held this level yesterday and as long as we didn't go below yesterday's low i'm i'm looking for this to break above today's high or yesterday's high and move on up for a second move upwards i don't know really where the next resistance will be i guess it's you know i mean there's a pretty significant level here and if it broke that i don't really see where the next resistance is so maybe we get into you know seven sixteen seventy you know seventeen dollars the next resistance and then up to here to twenty two and there's a pretty big window there so this is a pretty significant level to watch um, I don't know what caused this gap up I'm sure it's news and I could look real quick but anyway it hasn't sold off it hasn't sold off down to the two hundred day so watching this you know out of the open this is the five minute here. We get these pop-ups, but then it came back down. Pop-up, came back down. Pop-up, came back down. Sold, sold, sold. But then you start seeing buying coming in around here. And I was watching it. Um, where are we at? 958. All right. Right in through here, I was watching the, the level two. And I noticed that the bid kept moving up. Kept moving up, kept moving up. It kept getting hit. People would sell to the bid. But the bid kept moving up regardless. And that's a good sign. That means the market makers know where the bid support is. They're moving it up because uh, it's about to move up higher in a big way. And I nailed it because at some point, you know, it's just got to go. So I got in at uh, 1193, um, a little early. Let's see, right around here. It got a little little chop for a little bit, but then it finally moved, and we got this, you know, thirty thousand block go through, helped to push it over twelve. It stayed over twelve very nicely, but it was just a little slow for what I was hoping. I was hoping to see, you know, a really nice move above twelve, and and then continue on over the high day from yesterday. It just didn't do that, and shippers again were just the stock that was moving at this point. So I sold it for, uh, I sold half at 11.96 for three cents win and well, two cent win really, and then the rest at 12 for a six cent win there. So, you know, 80 bucks or whatever that is. Mm, what is that? Eh, uh, roughly 80 dollars. It's just adding to my total. So it was a nice, nice little trade. All right. So my next trade was tops T O P S. Uh, as you can see, this is a shipper. Um, a really nice move out of the gates, then boom, huge sell. And then we had, you know, this kind of consolidation area right here. And if you want to draw anything, you could do kind of one of these if you wanted to. You know, you got your higher lows being made. And, you know, this nice top that's holding up. So I was looking for the break of this level of... 717 i put it on stock twits actually i said over 717 this thing runs and sure enough i mean seconds after i put that in there it took off so i was get i was watching this level as it looked like it was going to break it i got in at 713 it popped up sold immediately at 730 for a nice win and it, it continued on to 745 and and then just absolutely exploded after that but it, you know, I nailed the call. It was a nice call. Shippers were going crazy. This is a shipper. Um, we had a nice consolidation area here. It decided that it wanted to go higher, broke above it, and the rest is history. So took 2,000 shares, uh, bought at 713, sold at 730. Nice $0.17 cent win on 2,000 shares. I'll take that all day long.
so ESEA was my next trade. I kind of got gypped in this one a little bit, but I wasn't too heartbroken about it. We kind of had this kind of, um, here's the five minute, popped up, sold off, and it was coming back up. And I was looking for it to break this level right here on the five minute. And as you can see, it's, this is kind of a cup and handle, right? Here's your cup, here's your handle, and then boom. Well, we're over here, right here, and I'm thinking, okay, we're going to break above this level, and it's going to go much higher. Uh, so I was looking to play that, and I was watching the one minute here. So we had this pop, consolidation, and looking to break above this level. I tried to get in at 680, uh, and I only got filled 231 shares. I was really bummed about that. So once I got the pop to be profitable, I got out at 687, and it's weird because right when I, right when I sold, the thing dropped heavy, uh, real hard, and um, I did not like that. So I was very happy to be out, even though it was 231 shares. I made five dollars, but uh, as you can see, the the idea was nice. is is a good level. As you can see later on, once it did break that level, finally it took off. But it just wasn't ready at the time. SPU was my next trade. This one was a candle over candle plate. You know, this would have been the perfect entry. You know, nice pop up, coming down a little bit of selling, consolidation going on, and then candle over candle. Well, I missed that play. I was obviously watching probably, you know, shippers going on. But um, this one was starting to hit the scanners a little bit, and SPU is definitely a former runner. I mean, look at the moves that this thing can make in one day. $8 to, you know, 12 you know, 11 to 14 I mean, this thing has just, look at this one, 6 to 11.40. This thing can move when it wants to, when it gets going. Even this, I mean, this is a six dollar to you know eight dollar move, two bucks. I mean, this it, I've played it before. I'm well aware that this thing can move, so I wasn't afraid to play candle over candle over candle. That's what I ended up doing here. You know, we had candle over candle here, and I was looking to play you know candle over candle on this one right here. I was looking once we broke this level. I was hoping to break this level and then this level here to get a move. And we were um, we were at the seven dollar level, which is a whole dollar, which a lot of people will put their stops on if they're short. And so a lot of you know three things working for me there. We got it. I got in at six ninety nine. It wasn't the best fill. I was actually a little late on the trigger. I was I was watching it. I I could have got in at six ninety two, and I should have, but. Again, I'm just not accustomed to there being follow through. So I've been really hesitant lately to jump in trades because there just hasn't been any follow through. Sometimes you get in at six, you know, six ninety nine for the break of seven of a whole dollar of any other stock, whatever. It'll break over seven, seven oh five, and then just sell off the rest of the day. That's how the market's been. Well, today was obviously a little different. We got that follow through, but um, I got in late, got in at basically seven dollars and i sold at 704 into this break it got as high as 715 but again it just i missed this is the play this is where i should have gotten in at 765 break to 683 maybe hold looking for this break here and then you can make that run off but 100 bucks i'll take it mbii was a pure news play they had news come out California allowed them to something, some rather, whatever. It was good news for the company. I heard it on Benzinga, and um, when I heard it, came over here, bought 2:45 seconds after the news came out, and it just didn't pop very fast. So I ended up selling on the ask at 2:50 twice. Uh, I mean, as you can see. When the news came out, you had 23,000 shares of volume, and the next minute you had 200. Uh, that's not a good sign. <laughs> when there's news that comes out, you want to see, you know, volume come through. And uh, it's a relatively low float stock, so I was really hoping that it would get going. But 
it just did not happen. So I was lucky to get out on the ask at 250 twice, made basically 100 bucks on the trade. So ESEA was my next trade. We had the, a nice formation of the cup, small little handle, and then this pop. And you can see on the one minute here, when it got through that level and that pop, there was, there was a hidden seller at seven and I was really hesitant to get in this trade here because there, I mean, there was thousands and thousands, I mean, 170,000 shares, 180,000 shares. There's a lot of shares going through trying to break the $7 level. There was a hidden seller there. Uh, if you don't know what a hidden seller is, basically, if you look on the L2, see how it says, you know, 200 share size. Well, if, 500,000 shares get sold at 574 and this number doesn't move at all that means they're hiding the shares that are actually available to sell and there was just thousands and thousands going uh, through at seven dollars I knew as soon as it broke seven it would take off but I also know that if there's a hidden seller and everybody's buying here and, and it doesn't break seven I mean, look at this for like five six minutes it's trying to break through seven and You've got about a million shares that went through trying to break through seven. If it doesn't break through and it just starts to sell off, hey, you got a million shares of people that are going to be bailing and this thing is just a tank. So I stayed away from it. But I saw that uh, it, it did break seven. And once it did, it popped up and it got halted on the way up. So to give you some kind of context of what was going on, DCIX, another shipper that has been going absolutely crazy today, has been at this point popping up and halting like all day long. We got a pop up here, halt, pop up here, halt, you know, pop up here, halt, pop up here, halt. So that one has been popping and halting all day long. You also had GLBS, another low float shipper. You look at this guy, same exact pattern, pop up, halt, pop up, halt. Pop up, halt, pop up, halt, pop up, halt, pop up, and it halted. Um, oops. So that's the context going into this halt, ESEA. I'm thinking, okay, same thing. We're going to find this one's going to start doing the same thing. It's going to go pop up, halt, pop up, halt, pop up, halt, and you know what not. So when it opened up, it actually dropped really hard, and I was. I felt comfortable buying that drop. It's like, thank you for the cheap shares. I'll get in here. So when it opened up, I got in at, I put a limit order in at 735 and I got filled at 726. And there was just a ton of sellers. I mean, 200,000 shares just went through and it went down to seven bucks, kept hitting down to seven bucks, kept hitting down, you know, lows that I was not comfortable with. So. Once the sellers seemed to be gone for a little bit, it did start to pop up. We got, you know, 555, came back down a little bit, get, got up to 765. But that huge drop, you know, usually you want to see, sell, you know, buyers come back in as it starts coming back up. And that just did not happen. Um, and part of the reason I believe is because at the same time, the other two that were doing the pop and halt moves, which is GLBS and DCIX, those stocks reached their, their climax, right? And they started dumping hard. Look at this. You go from $26 to $23. Now you're halting on the way down. Then this got halted. Then it opened up three bucks lower and then dropped to 1750. I mean, that's scary. If you, in two minutes of trading, I mean, it was halted for 10 total. You go from 26 to 17, that's basically $9. And you're, you, if it's, if you're like me, if you took 2000 shares thinking, all right, I'm going to get a gap up. Now you're down $18,000. There's a lot of people that got hurt today, no doubt. So these two started gapping down and that's why I believe ESEA gap down as well. Well, I didn't see that. So I actually got real lucky that I didn't get completely burned on this. So I got in at, um, like I said, 726, saw that the sellers were just hitting that bid, hit, hitting the bid constantly. So I started putting out 
sell orders, whenever we could get a pop up, and I was watching the L2, um, when I saw you know 735 pop up there on the bid, so it would sell a thousand shares, and then it would drop all the way back down to like 725, you know, whatever. So every time I saw bidders on the L2, I would sell into those bidders. So I sold a, you know, half at 738, half at 740. And I'm glad I did. Um, because, I mean, we got to 765. And then look at this. Boom. Down to 680. Uh, I'm just happy to be out of that. And then from the rest of the day, it's just kind of sold off from there. Do I think shippers are done? No. But they definitely need to take a break for a little bit. I mean, all the shippers are up crazy amounts. GNK. Uh, up 17%. DCIX still up 184%. GLBS up 195%. Sino up 150%. ESCEA up 30%. TOPS up 27%. OPTT up 13%. They all need to take a break. And the market is down right now, except the NASDAQ. Uh, it's, just, it's just crazy market. Got a little bit of lucky today, but the strategies were good. Probably going to sit on my hands the rest of the day. 1888. I'm happy with it. It's my first day of cracking a thousand in a long time just because the market has been nutso. I think yesterday I took one trade. The day before that was one trade or two trades. You know, it's nice to be able to make, you know, seven or eight trades today or whatever that was. But anyway, guys, that's all I got. I don't know when the next video will come out. Um, we'll just see how the market goes. Watching shippers, obviously, it's the hot topic. I think they'll they'll do well until something significant happens, like an offering on one of these shippers, or news comes out. Like ESA, EA just a little bit ago had news come out on Benzinga that Benzinga talked to the CFO, and the CFO said uh, that. Shippers are up, but these crazy levels are not justified. So you have you have the CFO of a company saying that his stock price is not justified. And that happened, I believe, right, right around here, I believe it was. It wasn't here. So that would have been a good time to go short if you could get shares of short, but... It's true though. I mean, the stock was a dollar a few days ago. Now it's at it hit a high of eight bucks today. Are you kidding me? That's that's just insanity. It's insanity. So, you know, the company's net worth went from eight million to forty six million in three days, four days. It's just silly. It's silly. So be careful when you're trading these shippers. At some point, they have to come down. Who knows when that'll be? Who knows when the top is? So just be careful when you trade. Find me on Twitter. Find me on Stock Twits. Find me on Google Hangouts. Link is down in the description below. And I will see you in the next video.